Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. And today I'm going to show you how to link Reaper to any other DAW in case you want to use sounds or features or MIDI effects or plugins from other DAWs. Now in the last episode, we talked about Rewire, so watch that if you haven't. The downside for Rewire is that it only works with certain DAWs and not all DAWs, and it has been discontinued. So while there are ways to still kind of use it, even for Live 11, as somebody showed me, it's still never going to be reliable and one day it will completely stop working. So we might as well start figuring out another way. So today I'm going to show you my way and it takes a little longer to set up and it has a lot of moving parts but the benefit is that it's still free and it'll hopefully work for a while. So like last week let's start with MIDI and to send MIDI from Reaper to another DAW we need to set up a virtual MIDI bus. So you can think of a virtual MIDI bus as a MIDI patch bay. So you will send some MIDI to one of the free channels on your patch bay and then you take another cable and send that stuff via an output on your MIDI patch bay to another DAW. It's basically a simple way of describing it. And if you're a Mac user, we already have a virtual MIDI bus that comes with Mac. But if you're a PC user, Loop MIDI by Tobias Ericsson is a very popular option. So go ahead and download this if you're a PC user. And if you're a Mac user, all you got to do is go to your audio MIDI setup and you can go to your spotlight, type in audio MIDI setup, hit enter, and you're very likely to open this window. This is the audio part of your audio MIDI setup. So what you can do is go to window, show MIDI studio, and you'll see all your different MIDI controllers listed here. As well as this thing right here called the IAC driver. By default this is disabled but you can just double click on it and bring the device online. And now you basically have this virtual MIDI bus to use and other than not being a physical thing that exists it basically works like any other MIDI controller. By default you will have one bus on here and on each bus there are 16 MIDI channels that you can send and receive. If you want more you can just create additional buses. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this bus. I'm gonna call it Reaper MIDI Out. Out. And additionally, I can create another bus and maybe call this one Live 11 MIDI out. And then I can send MIDI out of Live 11 to Reaper or to another DAW. And I can create more for as many DAWs as I have. So once you create as many buses as you like, just hit apply. We're going to close this window for now. So in Reaper, I'm going to go to my preferences, command and comma. And I'm going to come down to audio, MIDI devices. You will see a list of all your MIDI inputs and outputs here. And you will see the IAC driver now available as inputs and outputs. And as you can and see each of the buses you create are both inputs and outputs. So basically if I enable both the input and output on any of these IAC drivers that will create a MIDI feedback loop. So since I already have a MIDI keyboard and the MIDI editor in Reaper to do my MIDI editing I don't want to use the IAC driver as an input right now. I just want to send MIDI out from Reaper to another application. So I'm going to come down here to IAC driver Reaper MIDI out. I'm going to say enable output and you hit apply. So now we're ready to send MIDI out from Reaper. Today I'm going to show you how to do this on Live 11, but this basically works with any other DAW you have. And if you use Logic, there's some extra setup involved. And actually the wonderful Kenny Joya has an awesome tutorial on that, which I will link up here. But essentially, no matter what destination DAW you have, what you need to do in the destination DAW is pretty simple. It's just a matter of setting inputs and outputs, which I'm sure you are familiar with. On the Reaper side, I have created four channels. On these channels, I have my MIDI set to my MIDI keyboard. I'm going to open the routing on each one and up here you will see where it says MIDI hardware output. I am going to choose the IAC driver Reaper MIDI out. And for my channel one, I'm going to send this to channel one. After that, just rinse and repeat for other channels. So my channel two goes to channel two, channel three goes to channel three, channel four goes to channel four. So on these four tracks, I have written a bunch of MIDI stuff and now I want to send this to Ableton to play it. So here's Ableton and here's a project I have loaded up. I'm going to go to Ableton's preferences and I'm going to go to the link tempo MIDI tab and again down here we see the IAC drivers as inputs and outputs. So in Ableton we're doing the reverse of what we did in Reaper. We want to receive MIDI from Reaper but we don't want to send MIDI out. I'm going to go to this in here where it says Reaper MIDI out and since we're receiving that MIDI data I'm going to set this to track. Next on each of these tracks I'm going to set the MIDI from to Reaper MIDI out. For the first one I'm going to choose channel one. And again, rinse and repeat. Reaper MIDI out, channel 2, channel 3, and 4. So right now, as I arm these tracks and play it, you can see that MIDI information is being received on the Ableton side. We even get audio output, but we need to set up the audio bus as well. And to do that, the same way that we needed a virtual MIDI bus to send MIDI from here to here, now we need a virtual audio bus to send audio back into Reaper. And if you're a PC user, you're in luck because
because your installation of Reaper already comes with the rear out ASIO driver and that is basically a virtual audio bus. So you can set that as your output device in Ableton and then you can bring the sounds into Reaper. Us Mac users, we don't have rear out. So instead we're gonna use something else. My recommendation is using Soundflower. Soundflower is free and it comes with a two channel version and a 64 channel version. Every input on Soundflower is linked to the corresponding output. So input one and two go to output one and two and input 63 and 64 go to output 63 and 64. So go ahead and download this and we can come to Ableton. One more time, go to preferences. This time open the audio tab and I want to set my audio output device to Soundflower 64 channel. Make sure to click on this output config. You will see maybe one or two of these lit up and the rest not lit up. So just click on as many of them as you need and now they'll be available as external outs. Hit okay, close this window and now I can go and set my audio out to external out and choose additional buses. So just like with rewire, I use one and two as my master output. So I'm going to start routing my individual tracks starting from three and four. So I'll set my first channel receiving from channel one of IAC driver to three and four, next one to five and six, seven, eight, nine, 10. If I create a new track, that'll be 11, 12 and so on. So now as I play stuff here, the audio goes out from this channel and it's ready to be received by Reaper. And again here, if you're a PC user, you will have the option to have separate inputs and output devices. So you can set your input device as rear route and your output as your sound card. Us Mac users, we only have the option to use one device. Luckily for us, we can create aggregate devices. So one more time, go to your audio MIDI setup. And this time we need to be on the audio tab. So if you again have only the MIDI studio, showing just go to window and show audio devices it'll bring you here so what i need to do here is to click this plus sign and go create aggregate device and aggregate devices they can basically create a device that consists of inputs and outputs from multiple interfaces so what i first want to choose is my audio interface and the reason i do that is that i want my output one and two to be the output one and two of my interface where my headphones and my speakers are connected i can then click on soundflower and that will add soundflower inputs and outputs to this device. So my device has 14 ins plus Soundflower 64 makes 78 inputs and my device is four outs plus Soundflower 64 makes 68 outs. And once you make this, you can close this page. One more time in preferences and audio device, you set that to the aggregate device that you created. I can come back to Reaper, create five new tracks. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to right click on the record arm button. I'm gonna come down here to assign inputs sequence sequentially and I'm going to go to stereo five stereo pairs it will set the first channel to one and two next channel to three and four all the way up to nine and ten so I hit it and as you can see on these tracks this is input one and two three four five six seven eight nine ten I'm also going to set their monitoring on because soundflower is just a virtual bus it's not connected to any speaker so we still need to hear them out of output one and two which is my interface and now I can name these so my first one is Ableton master drum Drum kit number one. Next one is drum kit number two. Bass synth. I can give these a festive color like this. And now if I select all these tracks and record arm them, I can come and play my MIDI keyboard and I'll hear sounds out of Reaper. And I'm gonna hit it. This is what I believe the kids call a sick beat, bro. Well, it seems like everything is now fine, working all good, we're all happy, until I turn on the metronome, and then you'll see what happens. Yeah, so as you saw, when I turned on the metronome, we saw that the audio we're recording is not actually to sync with Reaper's internal tempo. And if I zoom in on my tracks, you see the problem right away. This MIDI event hit right here, and it was not recorded until this bit. And this is a 41 millisecond delay that we're experiencing right now. So I mean, the quick and dirty way to fix that is just to grab all four tracks and just hold shift and bring them back and put them on grid.
As you can see there in time, no problem. But this can be an issue with more complex setups. Maybe you're recording audio at the same time as you're receiving MIDI from Ableton and stuff like that. Also with Rewire, as I pressed play and pause, we saw that my Ableton transport also started to play and pause. So our transport was synced with each other. And when we did any kind of tempo change, that was reflected as well. Whereas right now, the only reason this is in time is that I manually set the tempo for both my Reaper and Ableton project to be the same number. But would you look at the time? It's already past rapid fire Reaper tutorial o'clock. But if you do want to learn how to sync your clock and your devices, let me know in the comments and that'll be the subject of our next tutorial. And otherwise, I'll just wait until somebody asks for it. But this system is pretty valid too. If you're only using the sounds from another DAW, if you're only working with stuff that just has one tempo throughout the song, you don't really need to sync up the MIDI clock. You can just use it as is, manually match the tempos. And basically to quote Kenny Joel, you're just using this other DAW as a sound module. I'm essentially using live as this synthesizer that I'm sending MIDI to, putting cables into its output, into my interface and recording its audio. And if there's delay and stuff like that, we'll just deal with it manually. Seems like nobody's really interested in this stuff. I don't even really know why I'm doing it. Just, you know, running out of topics. So please, if there's ever a time to ask questions on this channel, it's now. Drop them in the comments. I'll get to all of them. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you like the work I do, please consider donating to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link of that will be in the description. Thanks to all our previous donors. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye.